It's done. And ESP go vroom vroom. <laughs> So here's the finished project. I finished it a while ago. I just never got around to um, making a video for it. It's got two custom PCBs in it. One in the car, one in the controller. They both run on the ESP32, and it works pretty good. To give kind of an overview of the project, let's take it apart real quick, and I can go through piece by piece in case you wanted to make this project yourself. I'm going to link in the description to the printables page, which will have a parts list and all of the files I used as well as links to my GitHub if you wanted to use my code specifically. Um, or if you just wanted to use it yourself, I also included a file that's an empty chassis so you don't have to use my custom PCB. So this here is the controller, pretty simple and straightforward. It's just an ESP32 in a battery circuit, or battery charging circuit to charge this little LiPo battery. Um, there is no protection built on board for the LiPo because it's built into the battery. And it's got headers that come out of the bottom for these two joysticks. That is important if you wanted to use this project. The, the headers are supposed to come out of the bottom for the joysticks. Just whoop. Pretty straightforward little thing. So let's go ahead and take apart the, the card now. First, I'm going to start with the back area here. This is the custom PCB that it, uh, I showed in previous videos, but it's just an ESP32. It's got the whole LiPo circuit, charging circuit and a six volt boost converter, as well as a motor controller. So that's what makes this one different than the uh, controller PCBs. It's got the motor controller and the six volt boost. But if you don't want to use this board again, I included the file for just the chassis with that's empty, because you notice I have kind of a design in here. Um, you actually see my finished design is a little different. I just printed this one a while ago. So let's talk about how this thing actually drives the wheel. So it is a three millimeter by 100 millimeter shaft that goes from one side to the other. It is just a straight shaft all the way through. And it's got one of these tiny bearings on this side and another little bearing on this side. And you'll see here that this gear is actually printed. So I printed this gear using a smaller extrusion width than my nozzle, which is something apparently you can do according to the internet. I had no idea. That's how I was able to get really good definition on this gear. It's a little tough to print, but it can be printed. Um, with the standard 4 or 0.4 millimeter nozzle. On my previous iterations of the design, this pinion gear was actually printed, but I was running into lots of issues with it over time starting to slip. So I just straight up bought this one um, off Amazon. It was super cheap, came in like a pack of 12, and this fits perfectly with my gear. I, I designed this gear around this specific pinion, and they work together. This spur gear here, the way it attaches to this shaft and, and stays spinning and without slipping is through these little collars. So these things here, it's a little collar that fits around exactly a three millimeter shaft. And there's these little tiny, what are called grub screws in there, that tiny little thing. But that turns out to be exactly M3. And since I had a lot of M3 screws, what I did is you basically jam this collar into the opening in the front of the spur gear. Just jam it straight in. You line up the hole with the hole in the top of the gear, and you just put in a regular M3 screw, a six millimeter M3 screw that goes through the spur gear into this collar and then clamps onto the shaft. That's how I was able to get this 3D printed gear to fit perfectly and actually be completely centered on this three millimeter shaft without slipping. So yeah, that's that's how, that's the back part. Pretty straightforward. It just connects to the PCB and spins. This is a 2080 motor. Again, now there's a full parts list in the printables page. And these are three millimeter shaft wheels. It's just the, the hole. They just kind of friction fit on. All right, but now the front part of it is a lot more complicated with the way this thing steers. This thing uses something called Ackerman steering, um, which is a, a turning geometry. Basically, when you're turning left or right, the amount of angle that each wheel is, the inner wheel should turn more than the outer wheel because they're driving on two different circles that makes any sense. So when you turn the wheel, you'll see this one is a lot sharper than this one in terms of where it's pointing. The circles that they would, if you could imagine them driving on circles, that they're driving on are different. Uh, so that means that this one should be less sharp than this one, and that'll actually make the car steer better. This is how actual cars steer. Yeah, I can take apart the front here, and we can look at how this whole 
inside PeaceWorks. It's very complicated, and I am not a mechanical engineer, and I have no idea what I'm doing, so I just kind of made it up as I went, and it worked out okay, but it may be more complicated than it needs to be. You can start to see how this thing steers. So this servo here, actual servo arm, like the one it comes with, is force fit in here, which you can see in the 3D model. And it's on this side, and then I have it kind of sticking out the back. I wanted to give it this, like a pretty short throw that gives you more control over the steering because it doesn't need to turn very much to steer. So the smaller lever arm made a little more sense in this specific case. And then, the way it works is it connects to here. This actually has a, the ability to kind of freely move up and down a little bit on the shaft. And it's not connected with a bolt or anything. It's just this one screw going through. It sticks in here, and it kind of just rests like that because the, everything held together, it, it's not going to come off of that. And then these two little axle pieces connect to either side of this. Uh, there is a bearing in here on the inside. And then this locking nut with the little button cap again to give you more clearance. Two more bearings, one here and one here. And that lets it you know, move on here and be able to swivel with the lever arm. And you can see it a lot more in the, in the 3D model. And the Fusion 360 project is also on the printables page. And then two more bearings for the wheels themselves with these same little collars that I used for the gear. I got two more of them to hold these in place with a little 30 millimeter um, length three millimeter shaft. So yeah, that's that's how it works. It's actually relatively straightforward. It is a little bit difficult to assemble because you do want to put washers in here. You don't have to put washers, but it can help. There is um, some room for it. So yeah, I'll struggle to put this thing back together and drive it around. <laughs>